Next week is NADOC week. It's a week that's all about building the understanding of the culture and the history of the First Nations people and taking steps towards reconciliation and broadening that understanding. And the First Nations Arts and Culture Collective is a group in town that are putting on an exhibition and market day at one of Toowoomba's newest art galleries, which is the Wright Gallery, which is part of the Lighthouse Complex on the corner of Margaret and Hume Streets. It'll take place next week at a fantastic exhibition of not just painted artwork, but we're talking glassworks, we're talking basket weaving, and a fantastic opportunity to learn a little bit more about the cultural pursuits of our First Nations people. Let's find out a little bit more about it. One of the organisers is Barb Walker. She's a local Indigenous artist. And I caught up with her yesterday. And I started off by asking her exactly what the First Nations Arts and Culture Collective was all about. The First Nations Arts and Culture Collective is something that we've actually been working towards for about the last two years. We've been working really hard to get it up and off the ground. And what it is, is to actually support all of our First Nations artists in both southwest Queensland and some of those in the southeast part of Queensland. So it's actually getting them exposure, getting them out there so that people can see the sort of work that they're doing and how proud they are of what they are doing and how they're incorporating their interpretation of their culture into their work. So is it essentially the wisdom that, you know, it's easier to make an impact as a collective, as a group, than it is? It's very hard for a single artist to raise their head above the parapet, isn't it? It is. And having the support of those people um, in the collective to there to actually say, OK, this is how we can get you some coverage and get your artwork out there, get you then and guide you as to how to progress your artwork and if you want to turn it into a business, how we can actually help guide you through so that you can be a success. So whose work is being showcased? I mean, do all members of the collective, are they all having their work on display next week at the Wright Gallery or is it only a select few? We're trying to get all of the directors to have, we've got five directors in the collective and then we have got artist members of the collective. So at the moment we've got four of the directors having their work on show and we've got Marissa Ballinger who's a weaver and an artist, we've got Cheryl Moggs OAM who's an artist, Tanya Kierkegaard from Gundawindi, uh, she's a bigger more woman like Arnie Cheryl, she's an artist, there's myself with my weaving and then we've got some of our artist members, we've got Damon Anderson who's got his art and artefacts, Isabella Hazard who's got her artwork and her phone cases and things like that. Judy Kirby, who's an artist, and Tony Phillips Peterson, who works with glass and glass jewellery installations and things like that. So we're trying to get the invitation was actually sent out to all those artists that we know of in South West and South East Queensland and asking them to think about being in the exhibition so that we can get their artwork. But it's worked out well in terms of you've got a, a variety of art mediums. It's not just painting and it's not just weaving, but you've got a good variety of them. That's exactly right. And the more variety that we can get of artwork, because even with painting art, there are different mediums and different ways of doing the artwork that come to play. The theme that uh, all of the works are done around is the theme for NADOC Week this year, which is for our elders. Tell me, from an artist's point of view, does it make it easier or harder when they go and say, oh, you've got to, you've got to do your work around this theme? You know, just, I, I can see that it works well from a, putting on the exhibition, but does that make it really hard for an artist? It, it makes it hard for me from a weaving side of things because the only thing that I can really do is replicate something that my elders would have made in the past. So therefore I'm showing my respect to them by replicating their work. When it comes to actually painting, some artists can really bring to the fore their respect for our elders in the past and the present elders as well. It can be difficult because sometimes the artists have only got a very short lead-in time to think up the design and get the artwork actually 
done to be on display. So it's going to be amazing to see the different types of artwork and see how the artists have actually incorporated the theme into their work. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. The exhibition will also feature artist talks, which I think is really interesting, so people can come and not just look at the works, but actually hear the artists talk about what inspired them, how they did it, their own journey. Is, is that really the purpose, or what they say in those artist talks, is that going to be different for every artist? It, it probably will be slightly different for each artist, because each artist has got their own way of doing their art, and the mediums and things that they use will be slightly different. So finding out from them how they get their inspiration and how they actually put it into their work can be quite challenging. Yeah. And the same with those of us who weave, how we incorporate our country and our culture into the weaving project and places that we've been, how we incorporate them into it as well. Yeah. And that's where the artist talk will come in really, really handy because people will be able to ask the artists themselves, yeah, yeah. which will be great. Absolutely. What do you want people who come along and see this exhibition to take away from it? Just the variety and then the skill of the artists that we have got in our First Nations group in southwest and southeast Queensland. We have got an abundance of fantastic artists and artisans out there and we really want people to know that they're there and to really promote their work and to see the variety. And is it hard for an Indigenous artist to get their work known at the moment? Is, is there a lot of ignorance or just lack of knowledge amongst the general population about the talent of some of these artists? It's more from a, a personal perspective of the artist, it's sometimes hard to have the courage to say, I am good enough and I really want to push my art, I really want to display my art, I want people to know that I can do this wonderful thing and I can do so many different things with it. Knowing that if you go out there and you're trying to do that, you've got people behind you who can support you and guide you on your way. And that's what a lot of our younger artists feel that they don't have. So the whole purpose of the collective is to get out there and support them and guide them. So that will be the really big thing. Because yeah, it, it takes a lot of confidence, doesn't it, to it put does. your work on display yeah. and think that it's good enough for people to come and look at or perhaps pay money for or whatever. And well, that's exactly right. And even sort of like with my weaving, up until probably three years ago, I did it because I loved doing it, but I didn't realise that what I did, people would actually appreciate. And the more I'm doing things and getting out there and people are seeing my weaving and appreciating it is what I'm gaining from the experience and what we want our younger artists or our fellow artists, not only the younger ones, to know that they can do that as well. What was that feeling like when you first realised that, hey, someone actually, actually likes this? <laughs> when I made my first sale at a market, it was sort of like, yes! <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Art as a tool for reconciliation, because this exhibition is happening during NADOC week. How powerful a tool is artwork towards reconciliation? I think the variety of the artwork is out there and getting the broader community to know that we have got some fantastic artists and bringing that into play so that they can understand why we're doing what we're doing, how we incorporate our culture into our artwork, whether it is art painting or whether it is art weaving, whether it is the glass making, how we incorporate that all in there. And it's becoming more common now for us to actually not only verbally pass on our culture, but also we're getting more into the digital phase. So we can actually then say, OK, so this is your ancestors' voice. A lot of people still feel that it's a little bit of a taboo to hear a departed person's voice and their image because it can be shown as a sign of disrespect. But I think we're getting to the point now where having that and being able to say to our children and our grandchildren, this is your great-grandmother or your grandfather. Yeah. Look what they managed to achieve. Look at their fantastic artwork. Look at their beautiful music. 
you know, listen to it, listen to what they're saying, yeah. and then pass that on to the generations. Yeah. So that's part of the reconciliation thing, so that the broader community who have not had much knowledge or input or connection with our First Nations people can now incorporate that into their work. And, and I guess also one thing that an exhibition like this is good for too with that variety that we talked about earlier is to get away from that cliche that I'm sure some people have that Indigenous art or Aboriginal art is all just dot paintings, you know, which is really only one minute category, isn't it? It is. It is. And there is some stories out there that the Aboriginals didn't used to do dot painting until the Europeans came and they showed them how to do the dot work. But there's a lot of contention over that as well. But there's all sorts of different, like there's line work, there's dot work, there's figure drawing and stuff like that. So there's a whole lot of things that our ancestors have been doing for millennia that our different artists incorporate into their artwork. And yeah, it's just something, my weaving of late has been objects that I know that my ancestors would have been using out on country to carry their seeds or whatever yeah. and the more I do that the more I feel the connection yeah. to my country to my ancestors and then I feel really nice when I can actually explain to somebody how that connects me with them. Indigenous artist Barb Walker there that exhibition will run from next Monday the 3rd of July through to Friday the 7th of July at the Wright Gallery which is part of the Lighthouse which is on the corner of Margaret and Hume Streets open 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. and the artist talks which will be well worth getting along to they're happening each weekday at 11 a.m. offering you the chance to delve a little bit deeper into the artistic process and engage directly with the elders who are the artists and uh, you'll be able to ask questions and get insights from the artists themselves the highlight as Barb mentioned there the highlight of the NADOC week celebrations will be the market day on the 8th of July from 7.30 in the morning to 1pm. That's held in conjunction with that exhibition. A lot of stalls showcasing the creativity and craftsmanship of First Nations artists and your chance to go along and buy some of the items and uh, just immerse yourself in this uh, terrific cultural experience. So that's happening all next week at the Wright Gallery at the Lighthouse on the corner of Margaret and Hume Street. It's 21 past nine.